part of what you need to deliver in a movie like this is the feeling you've gone somewhere. Where am I? My place. We're off grid. This movie takes place all over the world. We go to Boston, Salzburg, Austria, Sevilla, Spain, and Jamaica. With these kind of films, I love making them because you do have that for an audience where they're on a journey. What am I wearing? Bikini. From tropics. How did I get in the bikini? June, I, I've been trained to dismantle a bomb in the pitch black with nothing but a safety pin and a junior mate. I think I could get you in and out of some clothes without looking. I'm not saying that's what I did, but... This is a movie that's not about reality, but it is about a fantasy made real. And part of any fantasy would be that it's it's candy to the eyes, that it should be very pretty. It's a beautiful city. Yeah. Never seen anything quite like it. It's certainly possible to fake an awful lot these days. But there's certain kinds of shots and certain kinds of things you can't fake. You really want to feel that your characters have traveled around the world. It's not just to be able to say you did it, but it gives the film a feeling. We're taking you on a journey. We're taking you to places you might never see. We were trying to think of places that had things that happened that we could use for action, that had dramatic set pieces, that had opportunities to see the world through a different prism. James Mangold called me about a month before this show got greenlit and he wanted to have some original ideas for locations. I riffed off a whole lot of neat countries that I felt hadn't been shot that much. We're making almost a kind of classic Hollywood film. We wanted it to be beautiful. We wanted it to be glamorous. We wanted to feel like you were seeing all these looks around the world, the humid, rich tones of Jamaica, the baked, warm sun of Spain, the kind of cool nights and icy landscape of the Alps and Austria, and kind of hometown America as well. We had to set up uh, basically five different offices in each country that we were shooting. We had to scout all of these places at various intervals and, you know, production is an ever-evolving process. It's just sort of like sitting in front of a giant chessboard and puzzling each of these scenarios and, and really working on the script to reflect what you want each piece to be about. It was logistically an incredible challenge. It's sort of the joys of producing. I've been making movies for 15 years, and I've never jumped from location to location like this. This is, you know, an overwhelming picture in a way. We're shooting in different continents, five different countries, constantly on the move, and the ability to deal with all that, but also never lose sight of what is really the heart and the essence of the story, which is June and Roy is keeping the audience involved in that romance and their chemistry. <laughs> Boston was incredible, a city that I've, I've only been to a couple of times just briefly, and to shoot there, it was just a great experience. Boston needed to represent the slice of life that June Havens comes from. It's just an everyday life. In Boston, it's gray tones, and it's trying to accentuate her working class, more monotone, monochromatic life. Boston is very unique. It's both really high-end and has incredible freeways and areas to stage all these sequences. But they also have a great working class culture that is there, so you really feel like June came from somewhere. I think my favorite set of the movie was June's garage, where she works. It was a municipal government building that was empty and we turned it into this very rich, classic car garage with lots of detail. The challenges of Boston are always that it's a city. There's a lot of action sequences that we shot in Boston in cars on highways, closing streets, causing detours. Working with the city, working with the government, and getting them to support the filmmaking is always a bit of a challenge, but Boston was terrific. Excuse me, can you tell me where we are? Right now, miss, we are in Austria. Austria, huh? The way we transition from one country into another, it comes out of nowhere. Somebody passes out, and the next thing, we're on a train in the Alps. So for a cinematographer, that's just a great challenge, but also great fun. I think everyone thought it was just going to be a lot of Wiener Schnitzel, and that actually the people were amazing, the, the city welcomed us with such warmth, and there's such a sense of history there. When we went to Austria, we'd been prepping for two months after the scout, and then within five days of actually getting there, all the locations had been changed and had fallen through. The only one that stood 
was the rooftop sequence. I think the first shoot day in Austria, we found 12 hours before we shot there. So. The challenge in Austria was that all of the story took place at night and is also projected to be the coldest time of year. My daughter is so excited that we filmed in Salzburg because, you know, the sound of music. And as I came out and looked at the city, it is the sound of music for anyone who knows the movie. Maybe now it'll be, you know, night and day. Night and day calls for an island sequence, and I never thought finding an island would be so hard. It's a hideaway. It's meant to be very simple, primitive, and we're shooting in high tourist season. So literally the choices in the world for remote, deserted beaches is very narrow. It couldn't look like it goes on forever because this is Roy's island, and this is the island that Roy has found a safe haven for himself that no one's ever found. So it really had to be like a little speck because when, when June tries to find her way off the island, she very quickly realizes that she's on a postage stamp, essentially. So Jamaica was perfect because it had really lush vegetation, very tropical feeling, exotic, and still really rural and relatively undeveloped. Jamaica is both beautiful land and beautiful people who are extremely helpful. I mean, we were pretty much at the end of our shoot when we went there. So we were an exhausted bunch of puppy dogs landing in Jamaica and we all got very well taken care of, and really nursed by what is such a beautiful culture there. I think the crew couldn't wait to get to Spain. All my Spanish friends were like, you are so lucky. For me, shaping the picture to end in Spain was in a large part shaping the picture to go to this place where we could do a chase like one I had never seen before. Fun action scenes in Cadiz with the bulls and then Sevilla with the motorcycles and uh, car chases and stuff like that. I love doing that. I think I've really found my city, Sevilla. Just the architecture and the people and the food. This is when the job is the best job in the world. Look where we are now. I mean, this is a private residence turned into a museum. It belonged to a duke. And it's got all the carved plaster. I mean, I guess you could have your art department work something like that out, but it would take them 40 years. Is this all weapons money or is this family money? We were having fun with the kind of crazy set pieces that you often find in movies like this. I got this. Ready, set, go! We're almost there. The adventure of traveling the world and throwing in all these new locations and trying to make them all meld together. That, for me, was the exciting thing. These really big sets that actually exist in the world, to be able to see the world on that large of a scope on the, on the screen is really fun. You're both the navigator and the DJ. We have a long way to go to Cape Horn.